Welcome to Not Like This. Not Like This. From professional wrestling, horror films, and everything in between. Strap in. And now your hosts, Dale Zawada and Jim Snedeker Jr. Welcome to the last episode of Not Like This. Yes. Woo! We're here. We did it. I we didn't have a we didn't have a set end in mind, but we kind of uh told you. We told totally, <laughs> We told you that this was coming. Told you about it. Slow rolled. You know, you just want to put the feelers out. Hey, it's probably going to happen. It's happening. It's happening. So this is going to be the last one. Next week's episode will be episode 0 of Slasherville, the Slasherville podcast. So please like and subscribe to that you can find that through all your standard podcasting platforms how you're listening to this right now probably going to work for slasherville as well yeah it, it it'll be available on all the platforms um like we met we we teased it before a little bit if you have um if you have spotify there'll be some special spotify premium shows that will uh We'll, we'll break down some some horror movie soundtracks and songs and things like that. But it will if you don't have Spotify or if you just have the free Spotify or you want to listen on iTunes or Stitcher, it will be available on all of those things still. Yeah. So check it out. So this is the last one of Not Like This, a bittersweet ending here 188 episodes of just this little guy this little period of time because lord knows we've been doing this for over 10 goddamn years and we're not stopping they're gonna have to put me six feet underground to stop me Woo! with a tear in my eye Love Ric Flair. Oh, let's just talk wrestling again for another hour. Let me just get it out of my system. Do it. Do it. Do it. Whatever uh, you got to do. I do just want to talk about how WWE is releasing more people left and right. Oh, no. Wrestling fans and wrestlers are not happy about this. And, they, you know, they keep shooting themselves in the foot, these WWE guys. It looks like they're getting rid of NXT. What? Hold they're on. just going to. They're just gonna get rid of it. They're just getting rid. It's like, like it's going away and becoming Slasherville, or it's Slasherville, or it's just gone. Kind of. I mean, they are kind of. They're gonna rebrand it. You're spot on, sir. Uh, a little bit of a format change because right now it's kind of, you know, like the next tier down. It's like a super indie. It's not really development at all. It's just a third show. And now they're thinking, let's scale it back. Let's make it an actual developmental program. Let's get rid of these skinny, fat, little, indie-rific sons of bitches. And let's go with big, massive, meaty (laughs) men. So Vince is going to just ruin NXT. And that's all there is to it. I'm sure Triple H isn't happy about NXT any of this but what can you do that's the boss that's your daddy boss that's your daddy boss so are, is it not going to be on tv or it will be a, its own special little well that, i don't know i think it will be they're just gonna it's just not gonna be a good show like before nxt was nxt it was a jobber show they were doing like obstacle course bullshit and there were pros, and then they had rookies. Like, uh, The Miz was a pro, and Daniel Bryan was his rookie. So it's like, you better listen to me, rookie, and here's what's going to happen. And, like, that was a whole shitty thing. Right. And then it became, you know, just a wrestling show, which was pretty great. So it looks like they're just going backwards. They're going to go back in time and and ruin NXT. USA Network is also displeased by a lot of what's been going on they're like we didn't buy that we didn't give you a time slot for that we wanted that indie riffic skinny fat stuff yeah what about the yeah hold on what about the skinny fat stuff what's going on 
this isn't what we talked about. So WWE just continues to do their thing. Uh, self-inflicted wounds. Fired a bunch of people. They have no goodwill. People do not. Like, why even work there? Like, these wrestlers get their dream jobs, which is great. And they move to Florida. They uproot their whole family. And then get fired a couple months later. Right. Great. Would I, I, I'm just saying some of these guys... Like, hey, do you want to you want to come down to NXT? You know what? I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I, th- that's so bizarre because from what you were telling me for a, for a time there, that was that was what you wanted to watch. That NXT was the hotness, the sort of up and coming good wrestlers. And you you had told me on numerous occasions it's like outshining the main show, and now they just oh, want yeah. to get rid of it. It has been for a while. It still is right now because they haven't ruined it just yet. These are changes that are going to be happening soon. But, yeah, it it's legit. It was the number one show in America as far as, you know, wrestling goes. And then, you know, AEW came and, you know, things changed a bit. But And that was great. AEW and NXT, we had the Wednesday Night Wars, which is supposedly a reason why Vince is doing what he's doing because... NXT lost the Wednesday night war. And Vince does not like to lose. So Baby. he's just going to fuck it all up. Triple it. Paul. <laughs> Paul, what are you doing down there in Florida? And, and it's funny because like three weeks ago, Vince went down to NXT and everybody was all nervous. Oh, no, Vince is coming on NXT. What's he going to do? And then reports came. Vince's trip down to NXT in Florida was great. Everybody was in good <laughs> spirits. There was good talks. It was great. O- overall positive uh, situation for Vince's visit. And now it just looks like he went down there to see who he could fucking fire. Get rid of him. Get rid of her. Don't like him. Don't like that other guy. This guy seems chubby. I want him gone. Yeah, but Vince, he's our champion. Don't give a shit. He's gone. Oh, Vince. Vince, he's Vince, Vince. Champion. Oh, bring him over here. Let me see. His. Let me see that belt, son. Give me that goddamn pal. You're not <laughs> yeah, <a champ>. you're, <laughs> you're not gonna, you're gonna Jeff Jarrett me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Give so, it to me. Can I uh, let me let me posit this theory? You, you think so? Maybe it seems like they want bigger, athletic wrestlers of your type of people, and you can't like they are so bad from the jump you can't just put them on a tv show even if you call it a developmental show so is that what you're thinking that this is going to be like a pure we'll we'll get some maybe some big stud athlete people that can't do shit but Pro- mm-hmm. we won't be relying upon them on this tv show to go head to head with AEW or anything well they're definitely not going to be going against AEW. And that's a good point. That is definitely going to be a little side effect of this. Because there's really nothing wrong with, I want, I want nothing but big men on my show. All right, weird, but okay. But yeah, a lot of them probably aren't going to be good or but- good for a while. And it's even funnier to me, because one of the main guys they fired, one of the bigger names, uh, Bronson Reed who was just their North American champion like two weeks ago, they fired him. He's a big dude. He's, he's like a Brodus Clay size type of fella. Mm-hmm. So that was weird that they fired him because there's a lot of smaller guys in NXT. There's no doubt about that. But if the show's good and the wrestling's good, who, who cares? Who cares? So maybe not even just huge big guys, but maybe like more athletic Maybe people from an ath, ath like a sport background that no, just can't I mean, work a lick because you said skinny fat. You know that's a good point. Just people that don't look like tough. No, there's just a lot of guys that are six feet and under over there. And mm. mostly every, mostly everybody down there is fucking ripped like a statue because all they they live down yeah, there. Because and it's because it's a WWE controlled thing. Yeah, so it's like, well, I work and then I work out and I eat and I just repeat that process. Like, <laughs> go to sleep. What, I wake up. Whenever, I whenever guys go from NXT to the main roster, it, they always gain a little bit of weight, and I love to watch the bellies. 
uh, because it's a different animal. You got to travel. You got to eat this McDonald's because you just need food in your body in this airport. But yeah, down in Florida, it's just everything is there that you need. So they get super in shape. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say there's a skinny fat person down there, but it's just a bunch of vanilla midgets. Yeah. As Kevin Nash would say, of course and he would. I'm I'm sad, like I'm you know anti WWE as of late because their product sucks and they should feel terrible. But I do like NXT, so this is terrible news. This is awful news for wrestling fans. Ah, oh Vince, what a bummer! I did not, I did not think the show was going to start with you announcing that NXT is just going to be no more. Is it still going to be called something? It's it's going to be NXT. It's just the NXT, just like it was called NXT before, and it was a bullshit jobber show with stunts and obstacles. <laughs> then it, then they just, it was like, okay, no, no, no. Now it's actually just a real wrestling show. Okay. It's just, it's just going through a, a, a reformatting. It makes sense though. Cause be, that, because but. then it's like, well, is it a developmental division if we're putting these people on tv and we need that to be a hot banging tv show then where do those people develop then we have to hope they're pre-developed developed before they get to nxt but they have they are that's what the indies are and they have relationships with a handful of companies and it doesn't fucking matter you don't need a system you are the system. Well, maybe they go, don't. Go so. fucking hire any great independent wrestler that you want. You don't need to woo them. Well, now you do because <laughs> job security is not a thing there. But but that maybe that's maybe that's the point. Maybe they want to have control over that wrestler from start to WWE, and they it, don't want. And I think well, it's going to blow up in their face. I mean, I think. Traveling around, doing the indies, working the high school gymnasiums, I think that probably builds, like in any industry, well, comedy, thing, music, wrestling. You need to, you need to do real stuff, but at your level, you can't just go from I sing in my basement to I'm singing on TV. Here's the thing, though. They've had almost no successful homegrown talents in their performance center. Everybody that's in NXT that's doing well, they were already kicking ass in PWG and GCW and on the indies. They have literally almost zero homegrown talent. That performance center is great for these established indie guys. I'm sure they love it, but they they haven't done what it was intended to do, and that's you know grow this talent from within. So, and that's another thing that I'm hearing is the performance center is expensive and they're not, they don't have the output that they wanted because like I just said, these guys just come in and they're pretty good as it is. So why, why bother at least to have this huge, you know, this big old facility and all this, like give them a little gym, you know, you still want to have some sort of performance center, but maybe not this extravagant getup that they have now. Like you look at like some of these like indie companies, smaller companies, they have a little warehouse that's the size of a, a three car garage. They got a ring in there. They got a thing off to the side so you can practice the promos and that's it. I know this because I've been in them and it's hilarious and they smell real bad, <laughs> I'm sure but it gets the job, but it gets the job done. But no, we have to have the performance center. Okay. Where, where, where are the results though? Yeah, just I mean, a, just a shit show. That's sort of the point I was getting at. Is I think you need the you need the little eighty seat shows with the bad sound and the broken monitor, and you can't hear yourself, and you gotta survive. You gotta survive that, not just survive it, but like you have to learn how to perform in that in any situation. And I think even back in the day when we when we talk about people that just sort of in a lot of people's opinions, were just like thrown into the big spot, like Ultimate Warrior. Even Ultimate Warrior didn't go from, I'm a bodybuilder in a gym, and then like, now I'm on WWF television and I'm the guy. Mm -hmm. You know, even he mm -hmm. had to work his way up and get to the WWE and then work his way up there. But he was also really over, is the other part. Uh, yeah. I, I just, it's, it's just, it's just weird. It does just seem odd. 
It's a real one. Here and here's my last bit on this, and it's a question to you, who do, you don't really watch wrestling too much anymore. What's uh, what's the color? What's NXT's color? Is it like yellow you know and I mean? black? Yeah, yellow, yellow and black. Yeah. One of the things they're going to be doing, we're going to re, we're going to reconfigure the colors of NXT, the new logo, new colors, and I'm like, why? It's established. Like I see that gold and black NXT. I'm like, oh, we got a good wrestling show about to happen right here. Right. I like that. And no, let's go ahead and change it. Honestly, I'm glad. So now when I see the new NXT logo, I'll just know that I'm, I'm in for some bullshit. <laughs> For Yikes. some bullshit. Yeah, some bullshit. Yeah. All right. So yeah, even I that was a good that was good. That worked because even I knew their colors and I can picture their logo. It's like if you said WWE logo, I'm like, well, it's sort of scribbly white. They made it less scribbly, it's just kind of pointy white, but then you got a little red swirly and yeah. on a black background. You know? Indeed. Why you don't it's really hard to come up with a brand that people recognize like that and why why you would mess with it at all is beyond me. I don't know, man. Vincent Kennedy Mc, McMahon. Dale, you that and I have been podcasting for a long ass time and it seems like we we're always changing the name but really we've only really changed the name revolving twice this will upcoming slasher will be the third one um and character work was like started out with an intention of having a a focus on you know movies stories in the movies the characters in the movies and stuff mm -hmm. uh but in the other but the other two show like this show and the first show is just kind of us talking about whatever uh i really appreciate all of the conversations we've gotten to have over the years and although it's it's weird it's like we're not stopping doing this we're just doing it with a different lens. It has been nice to just, just get to talk to Dale Monday. And I just yeah. really appreciate you sticking it out because, uh, you know, the, the last thing you were like, look, if there's stuff you want to do, you want to try, I'm on board. Um, and I'm like, I don't want, I don't ever want to stop podcasting with Dale. And I still don't. So I don't. I don't know if people like maybe if there's people are confused about what we're doing or anything like that. It's a breakup. Yeah, it's it's not even that at all. It's sort of like what do we love so much? Like what do we end up talking about anyway all the time? And it was wrestling or horror movies. So that's the. It, I mean, that's the reason. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's just, just a yeah. It, it, distribution of the content you know like odds are we'll still talk a little wrestling it won't be 80 percent wrestling like it is you know the last couple of weeks here it's gonna be you know five ten percent wrestling tops yeah and if there's like yeah, big know, newsworthy stuff in the beginning you know steam punk's back blah 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 or yeah. you know what is it's gonna be yeah 80 80 percent horror 20 percent you know the the rest. That's and that's what it. This this show has, has been for quite a while, and it's just like you know, lean into it, brand yourself properly, call it a day, and go down to Slasherville. I love saying it. I love saying it too, Slasherville. So everybody Slasherville. I've talked about it with is like, "Ooh, that's a great name for a podcast," and uh, they like the intro. They like the some of the artwork that has come out so far. And yeah, yeah. I, if you like, you got to look at it this way. It's really hard. We've never not, we've never like wanted the podcast to not grow. And this last go round is not like this was, we were both sort of frustrated and we, the name is even just because it made us laugh because we say it all the time, you know, like from the, like from the matrix scene. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm like, fuck it. Let's just talk and people will listen. 
or they won't. Either way, we're just going to talk, you know? Uh, but I, I really f- do feel like if it's horror-themed, it's horror-centric, it's easier even for people that already like us to tell other people about us. Like, oh, do you yeah. like horror movies? There's this cool horror movie podcast. And it seems like maybe it's too narrow. But when you think of, well, how narrow is it right now? It's pretty, it's pretty narrow. If you like to listen to me and Dale, you listen. That's, yeah. that's much narrower than if you like horror movies, you might enjoy this podcast. Yeah. And it, it's always about the personalities, your hosts. You know, I, I listen to a number of true crime podcasts. And as much as I love the subject matter, I usually tune in to hear these guys or gals, you know, have their banter and conversations. You know, I, I come for the true crime, and I, but I stay for the banter. And that's probably what's going to happen here with Slasherville. You, you know the topics or content you're going to get, but our, our takes on it, our goofball stories, that's what's going to put a smile on the faces. I hope. It Big will. Big smiles. Big smiles. It will. I feel, I feel good. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about it so far, and they're like, oh, my God, that makes so much sense. Like, why did it take you guys this long? to just sort of focus in on that. And I'm just excited. There's all of these things I want to talk about already. Uh, Movies that I want to talk about. Movies that I remembered being better than they were. That type of thing. Plus, you're, you're a screenwriter. You've written horror movies. You have a unique perspective that I like to hear from regarding it. Absolutely. And doing the and art is fun, and the little scary sound effects. It's just, man, it just speaks to my heart. Because one thing I was, I wouldn't say worried about, but I was like, man, we've already covered so much. That, like, we've ranked the Friday the 13th and the Halloweens and stuff. I'm like, oh, shit, like, is this well dry? Nah. <laughs> this not, well, e- not even close. This well does not go dry. And in, in, in all fairness, like... I, the, the, we have some loyal listeners that have been listening since almost day one of Sad Clown Radio. And they enjoy, like you said, the, they, they get us, they, they get our chemistry, they like the conversation. Um, but there are, think of all of the people out there that haven't heard our takes on this stuff. You know, they... They weren't around for that. We weren't able to reach them before because it's like, there's this podcast called Not Like This where guys talk about stuff and sometimes it's horror movies. How would they even find it, you know? It's going to be so much easier for people to find. And, and I, I, my thought was like, I saw the, like a way to replatform this and all that. And, and you and I discussed like, well, we might as well do the old Dale and Jim special and just rename it and, you know, new format, new art. Absolutely. And I'm just glad that it wasn't my decision this time. Like, I, I'm frustrated. I want to change the name again, Jim. Yes. It wasn't me that brought it up. Didn't bring up the name change. I said, okay, I'm on board with all this. Let, let the record show. Let the record show. So hell, yeah, and it's and it's good for us because honestly, we just get to put it in autopilot now because we know what the show is gonna be. It's right there on the tin. You know what to expect when you press play, and you're gonna get that for an hour every week, no weeks off. That's what we do. Yeah, we with just... a tear in my eye. We're... <laughs> <laughs> Forever. We don't, we're, we're not going to stop grinding this podcast grind. I started my Twitch grind. I finally started it wholeheartedly. I've streamed one or two other times before to like, oh, me and Dave are playing Street Fighter and I want Mike to be able to see it and I'll stream it, right? But with no capture of our, no, no even f- delusions about other people seeing it, like strictly because it was the best way to have a third party see a game, right? It wasn't like to try and be a streamer type deal. 
But I'm like, you know what? So many people when we play Overwatch assume I'm already streaming. We have we laugh so hard in there sometimes. Uh oh yeah. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just let's try. I'm gonna try it. Let's I'm just gonna try it out. And I've been trying it and making little tweaks and little changes and trying to make it better each time, but just doing the grind. Like every week we do a podcast. And so far every day I've been streaming. And I don't know, people are showing up. In droves? No, not in droves. Um But it is weird how it goes from there was like nobody, one person, two people. 13 people. And I look at the list of 13 and I go, I don't know four of those people. They just found me and started they following me. They get in. Yeah. So the, the, this, I feel the same thing is going to happen with Slasherville. It's going to find its audience. But the, the audience listening right now, you people that have been with us, you from the beginning, I hope you don't feel like we are you know, dissatisfied with you as a listener or anything like that. We want you to come with us to this this new place and keep having fun with us and keep enjoying the conversation. But back to what, what you were saying, like, is the, like about the well. I'm in disc replay and there's all these movies and I'm getting all these movies. And before it would be, I would sort of think like, well... I really can't talk about Doll Man versus the Demonic Toys for 25 minutes. I mean, I can, and we have done stuff like that. But it's like, who is even going to give a shit about that? Right. That listens. Yeah, you, you, have, you almost have that guilt. Like, who's this for? Right. Well, now yeah. it's literally everybody that's yes. in the room. Yes. And yeah, exactly. And it's so it just felt, it just felt right. And I kind of wanted to do it before, but I'm like, I don't know. Are we gonna are we gonna lose people? And then you know, you re- and we might. I hope we don't lose a single person. But you know, we might, and it's it, it's part of the process. Yep. I know a lot of our loyal listeners are making the jump. I've had several of them reach out to me. Yes. Which is always really sweet, and I never know how to handle it. it right. Is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah we got a we got a like really touching message from Kayfabe Jim. And kayfabe, Jim, we're not we're not going anywhere. We are behind the behind the curtain. Things are shifting around, but Dale and I will be here, and we'll be podcasting, and you can keep listening. You don't got to worry about any of that. I think he's gonna start writing screenplays too, so it's more fucking competition over here. Yeah, oh, real you nice. Could, you could always uh, sandbagging's the wrong term, but you could always like. <laughs> Sabotage? Yes, yeah, but that's the one. I knew it was an S. It's an S word. It's definitely an S Which, word. See, what you want to do is you just want to read Blake Snyder's Save the Cat and take every word as gospel, and everything will be all right. And then just cold call people. What I want you to do is just e- find email addresses and just send screenplays directly yeah, just to directors. Send, don't ask them first. You just send it unsolicited yep. because they love it, and they'll instantly read it. They're not going to delete it right away. They're instantly going to read your unsolicited screenplay. Um, so do that as well. Yeah, I think of when you hear unsolicited, I want you to think indie street cred. And that's what people want. Just send it on in. <laughs> and it is like I've I've listened to like indie directors on YouTube and stuff. And it's interesting when you hear them talk about it, too. It's like it's not even from a standpoint of like, I don't want to read your garbage. They're like, look, if this just comes to me, then I got to deal with uh, sort of plausible deniability of like, no, I didn't steal that from something some guy randomly sent me. It's just like, no, just go through the proper channels and everything will be legit. You know what I mean? There's like a, uh, you've, I, we've heard stories. I'm trying to think of some of the, the more famous ones. I, there's one that's just on the tip of my tongue that I can't think about, but it was like a guy claiming, well, I really wrote this movie because one time I I sent a treat, someone's found my treatment to something that I sent so-and-so. It was like f- f- a famous production team or duo or something. Ooh. And they and this guy was claiming he, like, oh, yeah, that that whole thing is mine. I feel like maybe it was like a science fiction-y story. It's, it is ringing a bell, but I can't place it. 
But just shit, shit like that, people want to avoid that out of those, yeah. at Absolutely. all costs. Got to cover their legal butts. Uh, unless you're just getting into screenwriting, then de- def- definitely, definitely do that. De- definitely do that. I don't need competition yeah, oh yeah. out here of in course, the streets. Of course. Of course. Dale, I, I got to make a confession. Oh, yeah. I've a big been, confession. I've been promoting on the show, you know, encouraging people to check out uh, the first 10 pages on your YouTube Hell yeah. channel. Hell yeah. And I see the screen thumbnails and they look cool and the movies that you do i'm like oh i bet that's gr- neat and i hadn't i hadn't really watched a whole one until oh today my, oh until today God. until today which one did you watch i now i gotta remember it because oh i watched the dawn of the dead one it's the latest one i think very good it what was the first one that popped up in my feed and i'm like well youtube must want me to watch this and i watched it and uh i loved it i think that's a great like you had great takes on things and i loved when it was like ooh now he's going to break down why he likes this part of the screenplay and what's neat about it is it's not just you breaking down the story or the movie or even like just like straight up like the dialogue or anything. You'll go through and you'll be like, this is a neat way that they wrote this because some director or so, you know, some script reader is reading through this. And to phrase it this way, like, like you had a great one um, with the Dawn of the Dead where you're like, he could just put in Man Screams uh with agony but they actually wrote like oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's like it's like when you listen to a a rick beato break down a song or uh, so you're like dawn of the dead that's just kind of a simple horror movie and then you'll hear some simple pop song and this rick beato guy on youtube will break it down you're like oh shit yeah i didn't even look at it that way because that's like his we that's his wheelhouse that's his bread and butter yeah. So yeah, it's a, it is a great concept, and uh, it just works. I can't wait to watch the other ones now. Yeah, and just like with your streaming and you're making your tweaks, getting it down. I'm also making my tweaks, getting it down. One thing I'm <clears throat> doing is I'm I'm reading less of it, you know, word for word, and just kind of going over important elements. I think that's gonna uh, make the series much better. Uh, so, well, thank you, thank you for listening. That is a, a good one. I did like that one. And coming out this week, this Friday, is uh, what's the date on that? I think it's uh, Friday, it's August thirteenth. I think. It's the ninth. No, hold on, hold on. Yeah, what is it? The twelfth. Today's Thursday's the twelfth. So yeah, Friday the thirteenth. So what do you have coming out on Friday the thirteenth? Halloween. <laughs> 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 Freddy's <No>. dead. <laughs> it is going to be Friday the 13th, the original, and that is a nice 25-minute episode. That one is a lot of fun. There are things in that script, Jim, I had no idea about. Do you know what they called? Um, uh, spoilers, the killer is Jason's mother, Pamela Voorhees. Do you know what they oh, call no. her? Hold on, wait. Stop the I, press. I know. It's I not should Jason. say this for Slasherville. I should say that for Slasherville, right? <laughs> Uh, what did they, what did, what, what did they call Because, you know, it's like you got this unseen entity, you know, killing mm-hmm. these campers. You know what they referred to her as? That the bitch. Prowler. The Prowler. The, that bitch, the Prowler. The Prowler. I said, okay, The Prowler. And two years later, there would be a feature film called The Prowler. prowler. Or just you know, like, Prowler, mother, yeah. I'm like, motherfucker saw the script. Said, I like that. I like that. So yeah, check out the Friday the 13th, the first 10 pages on my YouTube channel, uh, at Dale Zawada on there. More coming. I just did the Candyman one Ooh. because Candyman's coming out, the new Candyman. So, you know, little tie-ins, trying yes. to, try to get a rub. And I forgot how good, not just the movie, the script and all that, but the music. That Candyman theme, that Helen's theme, that is... The good stuff. So I, I think one, one of these episodes on Slasherville, uh, I want to do top five, probably top ten favorite horror themes. Yeah, that's a, that is a great 
we could do a whole podcast about it, and then I could we could make a companion episode. Where oh we, yeah, where there we it just is. intro each theme, and if you have Spotify, you can listen to the themes. Uh, yeah, that'll like be it. that would be great. I would love to do that because there are some just all time classics. Uh, there. So it's weird. I just bought Candyman on DVD a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. It's a good time to get it. Good, good time, time to, get, to it. get it. It's a good time to get it. Now, there's a lot that takes place in Chicago, and there's definitely stuff that's in Chicago. But how much of it was shot in Chicago, or or was none of it? Am I tricked? Because I definitely recognize some of the exteriors of the. Yeah, definitely a lot of the exteriors. I think a lot of it actually was, which is great. That's cool. Which was great. I love that tie-in. I remember yeah. when the trailers were on TV. Just being terrified. Like, God, this movie looks fucking scary because I don't like bees. Like, that just makes it even worse. Like, yeah, that big I, hook thing is bad. All of it's bad, but then there's bees. I remember not <clears throat> digging the bees part. Cause, uh, bees? Job's not on board. But because I was just like, what, 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 is, what is this? Uh, get Macaulay Culkin out here. He's going to get stung by bees. I was like, what, <laughs> what's going on with this movie? I'm not afraid of bees. That hook hand, you got me with the hook hand, but What's this about bees? <laughs> they hurt. And they're creepy looking. That is what I hear. They sting you in the ass. Hit you in the ass. So can I tell maybe, maybe one of the last stories and not like this history? Yes. Of course. All right. This is a story about me going to the Windy City Thunderbolts minor 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 league baseball game which jim was supposed to go <laughs> I to i was i had a dad Mentioned bot it, show mm, the night before though mm, it, went it got late. too wild it got, got too, too wild late. so i go to this minor minor league game with uh sometimes co-host jd and our buddy mason and we get real good seats because it's you go know, minor league pretty easy to do so and it's dollar beers and by the way, Colt 45, not bad. Not a bad beer, especially for a dollar. Not too bad at all. Damn. Dollar and beers. First inning, we're settling in. We're having a good time. And these uh, couple young ladies uh, come up to us, and they work, with the, they work at the venue, at ah. the ballpark. And they say, do, um, hey, fellas, do a two, you want to do a, an, an event on the field between innings in the, in the third? And JD goes, well, these two do. Yeah. You know, just yeah, throwing us right under, right under the bus. And Mason's like, yeah. And she's like, do you want to hear what it is first? And I was like, that's a good point. Please explain. <laughs> and she says, well, it's, it's going to be, a, you know, we're sponsored by White Castle, and we want, we're going to do a, a race to the Crave case. So, you know, you, you have your bat, you put your head on the bat, you spin 10 times, you get nice and dizzy, and then you run to the Crave case, and whoever gets there first wins a coupon for a Crave case. And now I'm on board. Mason was already on board now now i'm super excited sign me up and i and i did i had to sign a waiver it's like so in case your achilles just explodes yeah that, that's on you that is on the windy city thunderbolts so that's the third inning so i get another beer i get the beers going and then we go to to the staging area and, you know, they run us through what's going to happen. All right, Mason's in the blue shirt. We got Dale in the black shirt. I'm going to take my notes, you know, for this little MC guy. And before you know it, it's time. And we walk up out into the field. And I am, you know me, Jim. I'm Mr. Showbiz. Mm. You know, big, <laughs> big crowd. I'm like, let's fucking go. Uh, <laughs> this is having so much fun. Because my intention was I was going to do one of two things. I was either going to just straight up beat mason's ass and get that crave case <laughs> or you mean like physically not in the race no no I, no i'm just gonna win the race oh okay I'm, i thought I'm you meant just like beat that. him down and take it or i'm gonna do some comedy bits and luckily the two young ladies are gonna count so like we have to do the 10 rotations around the bat and i was like you're gonna count right and she's like yeah well we're gonna count and i was like well count loud so I, I can i can hear and my lady did mason's didn't which is great um, and before you know it, all right, here we go. We got Mason and Dale, and they're going to race to the Crave case. And all right, and go. And we start spinning around the bats. 
And I'm like, oh, this is so much fun. I can't, I'm having such a good time. <laughs> then I get around that fourth or fifth rotation and I go, uh oh, that ain't good. I'm feeling, I'm feeling real dizzy right off the bat now. So I'm getting like my stutter steps. And I can see Mason out of the corner of my eye. He's starting to go already. I'm like, damn, I'm like rotation eight. So I'm going to do my little rotation. And she's like, all right, Dale, go. You did it. Go. And Mason's got the head start. And I start running. And whoa, he almost veers off <laughs> into the home field dugout, which I didn't see live with my eyes. But on the replay, that was almost disastrous because <laughs> you're fucking dizzy. Um, so he's he's off and running. I'm off and running. I fucking lose my balance immediately, and I have a, I have a nice little stumble, and I'm like, oh shit, oh here we go, we're doing bits now. Um, so I get back up. Mason gets uh, back on track. He corrects course, and we're going. He's still got a pretty good lead. Right when he's closing in on the crave case, I do a full extension dive because you I gotta take a bump on the turf. I gotta do it. And I take a full extension dive to try to maybe, you know, improve my odds. Big silly bump. Everybody laughs. Good time. Mason wins the crave case. And everybody had such a lovely time. And we we got a lot of love and props uh, throughout the night from folks. And I have to say. Folks, you have to check out a minor minor league baseball game because that shit is fun. It is fun and affordable and usually like, you know, the the food is also way cheaper than a regular game. And let me can I I will tell you a little another confession here, Dale. Oh, I've seen it. JD took a video of the whole oh, thing. Oh, I know. And he oh, sent yeah, it to me. Video. Oh, we've got the he video. He sent it to me and Oh, uh, when I saw you going down, I was like, oh, he's about to just bump. <laughs> Here comes the bump. We flare bumping now. And I, and I, absolutely. I, did, I did think Mason was going to die. I mean, it looked like he was just going to dive head first into the fucking <laughs> dugout. <laughs> I loved it. Absolutely. I watched it three times in a row. It, yeah. And, so, it, and I'm thinking like, I'm, as I'm watching you guys do it, right? I'm like, um... Ten times is a lot of times to spin around well, he, that bad. Here, like, I, I knew the bit. I know we're supposed to look foolish and stumble and bumble, and that's great. I'm all, I'm all about it. Um, here, here's the trick with them. The bat was real short, so it's not like I'm, you're really hunched over mm -hmm. to, like, to your fucking knees almost and then doing these rotations, and your body does your equilibrium does not like that does not like it i does do not, not like it <laughs> like that but i did holy hell i'm gonna be going back out there early september catch a ball game and a wrestling show after the fact what good yeah, time that's what really bummed me out i wanted to see that so bad but i i i uh i couldn't even hardly make it through the day i was so mm. tired you ever have you ever been so tired that you feel like you're gonna throw up all day no. Yeah. Well, that's how tired I was that day. Got home at quarter to one. Couldn't fall asleep till 2 a.m. I had to get up at six. And it was just brutal. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to bail on these guys, but I, ha I have to do it. <sighs> yeah, I, that I'm could have so been. We could have been promoting Slasherville out there. Speaking of Slasherville, thank you guys. From the bottoms of our hearts for sticking with us all these years. And thank you for listening to Not Like This. This is the final episode of Not Like This. But follow us over to Slasherville for episode zero. The introduction. Absolutely. And... If if you're struggling at all to find the podcast, the hit us up on the socials at Dale Zawada. I'm sure I'll be posting it ad nauseum, so there'll definitely be links and things like that to get you set up and comfortable. We're gonna save you a nice seat, nice seat right there on the corner. So if you need to go to the bathroom, you can just whoop go right to the white right to the washroom. You know you don't have to step over people. Excuse me, pardon me. No, 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 no. We're gonna save you the best seat in the house. I think that's going to do it, Jim, right? Oh that's going to do it for us. 
Thank you, folks, for listening to Not Like This. This was episode 188, the final episode. See you down in Slasherville. I'm Billy D. Williams. And I'm Tommy Lee Jones. It's a Colt 45 tie in. Oh, me. I thought it was two faces. Damn it. <laughs> I like it. I like where your head's at. Folks, I realized I had forgotten to tell you where to find our new podcast, Slasherville. Go to anchor.fm forward slash Slasherville pod. And also follow us on Instagram at Slasherville pod, Twitter at Slasherville pod, and Facebook.com forward slash Slasherville pod. We'll see you there.